Ik zou dan ook het woord willen geven aan Antonio Quiarenza uit Italië, de, van de, uh, de lokale gezondheidsautoriteit in Reggio Emilia. Antonio Quiarenza, die het hart en de motor is van de Met Task Force, die daar een heel belangrijke rol in gespeeld heeft en al heel lang. En die een inleiding gaat geven tot de manier, een overzicht gaat geven van de wijze waarop men in Reggio Emilia in Italië probeert om te gaan met culturele diversiteit in de zorg en uh, hoe men uh, probeert om voor iedereen gelijke kwaliteit van zorg aan te bieden. Antonio, de floor is yours. Thank you very much, Hans. First of all, I want to say that I'm very pleased to be here again. I've been here another time, or maybe twice. So I'm very happy to share with you I mean, uh, this workshop. And, um, <clears throat> and um, I also wanted to thank Hans, uh, Isabel, and his team for organizing this important uh, uh, meeting. Uh, I sincerely hope that uh, we'll, you will enjoy the workshop and that we will have a good opportunity to to debate, uh, to get working, and uh, to share experiences. Uh, now I go to my presentation, which is there. Uh, Hans, um, Hans mentioned that uh, <clears throat> I'm the chair of the task force, uh, but I work in the local health authority of Reggio Media, where I'm responsible for uh, research and innovation. Um, my presentation today will, will focus on the importance to have a strategy, an overall strategy, to initiate and maintain a process of change in the organization in order to make it more responsive to diversity. Uh, in particular, we'll, I will talk about uh, the Migrant Family Hospital uh, project uh, as, a, as a model to facilitate uh, this process. Uh, and I'll uh, um, provide the example on how it has been implemented in the local, this model has been impl implemented in the local authority in Egypt. Um, the global phenomenon of migration and uh, population change uh, poses uh, enormous challenges uh, to health services providers. Uh, as uh, health service providers, uh, we every day fa are faced with different needs, conditions and expectations concerning health and healthcare delivery. In this context, we see that the more vulnerable populations is receiving a poorer care due to the barriers and inequities in healthcare applications. This is often because healthcare services are often not sufficiently equipped to effectively respond and recognize the multiple levels of diversity of the population served. Therefore, the question on how to make our system accessible, responsive and appropriate is an enormous challenge for many health systems in Europe. Um, but uh, what I want to say is that if we want to address uh, this uh, challenge, uh, we have uh, to be aware that uh, healthcare provision lies not just uh, in the relationship between the patient and the clinician, but it's rather embedded in the whole system of care. Whatever competencies the provider in, in uh, delivering care, uh, it will, he or she will never achieve an optimal level of care if we don't consider that this, this uh, uh, relation of care is embedded in the organization of the services, which themselves needs to be um, uh, designed in a way to uh, to favor this relationship. And uh, the organization of the services itself, uh, we have to keep in mind that it's part of uh, the community which, uh, with which it interacts, and uh, that uh, uh, all this fits uh, in the overall health system of care. Uh, where health policies affect all the different levels of the care system, the individual level, the community, the organizational level, 
and uh, the community and uh, the, uh, the health system. Also. Every action we take to change one of these dimensions has an effect on the other uh, dimension of care. Despite that, in the past, when we wanted to improve the responsiveness to diversity, we mainly concentrated in improving the cultural competence of health providers, um, often uh, given less attention to developing uh, the overall organization. Uh, so what we need now is to adopt uh, a whole organizational approach in order to implement a comprehensive process of change aiming at developing on the one side cultural competent staff but also cultural competent organizations and um, the community cultural competence approach and the MIPEX about which David will talk later are two important additional and complementary strategies towards the, develop the development of a culturally competent health system. So, the Migrant Family Hospital project is simply a model to put in practice this whole organizational uh, approach. But what is uh, a Migrant Friendly Hospital? A Migrant Friendly Hospital uh, is a hospital that recognizes migrant friendliness as an essential principle of organizational quality. It is uh, migrant friendliness, migrant friendliness needs to be recognized as a core criteria for quality in the organization. The overall aim is achieve uh, uh, equity in healthcare by developing sensitivity and responsiveness uh, uh, to diversity. To achieve this uh, uh, goal, the hospital or the health service needs to, um, to develop, uh, to have a competent staff, a staff that is able to work with persons and patients with uh, uh, diverse backgrounds, and at the same time needs to adapt, change the organization of the services in order to better respond to the diverse needs uh, of, uh, of uh, the population. So, uh, it's not, uh, this is not about uh, privileging the unprivileged. Uh, by improving the quality of care for refugees and migrants, uh, uh, we will improve the quality of all, of all patients. Uh, uh, in the direction uh, to develop uh, uh, person-centered care. Um, this approach has been adopted uh, by the local health authority of Reggio Emilia as an overall uh, uh, approach and strategy, and it has been uh, included in uh, this experience in the WHO compendium of uh, good practices. Also, intercultural mediation of Belgium was included in this compendium. And now a few words about the situation in Reggio Emilia. Reggio Emilia, some of you have been to Reggio and might remember it uh, with uh, know, good memories, I hope, uh, is, uh, is one of the promise of the Emilia Romagna region. Uh, in total, in this region, we have 17 health care authorities. Uh, we serve a population of uh, more than half a million inhabitants. And we have uh, hospitals, uh, six hospitals, and six, uh, six health uh, uh, districts. In, uh, in the past uh, 20 years, the percentage of uh, migrant population has uh, sensibly increased in this area. At uh, the beginning of uh, 2015, it was 12.3% of uh, the population and in certain other areas it goes up to 25-30 percent. We have more than uh, uh, 65,000 legal migrants with a resident permit. We have 1,900 uh, asylum seekers uh, who have applied for the refugee status uh, and we also have two other regular migrants but it's difficult to count them. They are normally between 5 and 10 percent of the migrant population. One, characteristic, one feature of the migrant population in, Reg in Reggio Emilia is the varieties of countries of origin. 
we have more than 140 uh, nationalities uh, with, uh, that speak more than 200 different languages. And compared to the, uh, the initial uh, migrants group that reached Virginia in, in uh, 10 years ago, we see now uh, more uh, small groups of migrants. Uh, uh, they're more transient, there's a lot of mobility, and uh, uh, they are more socially stratified, less organized, uh, and more legally differentiated. That means that they have different rights to access uh, uh, healthcare services. Um, but we can see that uh, the health policy context in this region, in this province too, is quite a favorable one. Legal migrants have the right uh, uh, to register to the national health systems, provided they, that they have a, a resident permit. Also, undocumented migrants have the right uh, to free access to healthcare services because we have a national law that uh, allows this. Also, at regional level, we have a good, uh, good policy framework. The health and social policy um, um, foster the, the, the realization of uh, an equity approach in, uh, in healthcare and social services of the region. And uh, also, it, uh, it foster, it tries to facilitate uh, uh, social integration of migration groups, and also there's a specific law to combat uh, discrimination. So, the, the regional policy is a good one. But uh, how did we uh, develop this over important overall strategy in, uh, in uh, Region Media? Uh, in this favorable context, uh, I think it was very important for us uh, to produce evidence, uh, produce data to convince the management uh, to support uh, the implementation of the strategy. And to do that, they needed to see data, to see the evidence. For this, uh, we initially uh, started a um, uh, 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 process uh, to collect uh, uh, the point of view. We did a, a needs assessment and uh, on the other side an organization assessment. Uh, we uh, asked uh, uh, migrants, patients, staff and community members uh, about their experience uh, in accessing healthcare services uh, through different means, uh, in depth in interviews, uh, uh, short discharge interviews, uh, focus group discussions and uh, surveys, uh, etc. On the other side, uh, we looked at uh, the state of our services, uh, at the, the way we deliver services. So we looked at uh, how our services uh, were in, uh, um, adapted uh, to respond to migrants' needs. We looked at uh, how many facilities we had uh, to facilitate communication, uh, uh, to provide information to migrants and so on. So the, the needs assessment produced a list of uh, uh, 10 most frequent problems identified by uh, the stakeholders, the patients, uh, and uh, the, the organization assessments provide a sort of a baseline uh, to uh, start um, uh, to, to implement the change in the organization. Um, just a quick look at the result of this uh, needs assessment. Uh, patients uh, uh, reported that, uh, that they, have, uh, they had difficulties to communicate with staff, particularly in the clinical context, uh, in explaining symptoms uh, and also in understanding medical information and the treatment proposed. Uh, they also told us uh, that sometimes uh, the staff had uh, uh, an inadequate attitude towards in relating uh, to them. Uh, they, they also told us they, they received uh, uh, insufficient information on available services and uh, in, uh, the function, on the functioning of the services. And uh, they also uh, let us know that uh, they had difficulties in understanding uh, you know, services like prevention and primary care. And, uh, and uh, they had also difficulties in understanding the discharge uh, uh, instructions and how they had to follow up uh, their, their treatment. 
what healthcare uh, uh, healthcare staff reported, uh, or the, you know, their report reflected in a way what uh, the patient uh, said. Uh, they uh, stressed that uh, they have uh, difficulties in achieving an effective collaboration and compliance with migrant patients. Uh, obviously, language barriers was. Uh, identified as an important uh, problem. They also told us that uh, they have difficulty to manage the inappropriate access and use of hospital services, in particular emergency services for undocumented migrants, which is in some way comprehensible because they don't have GPs. They have this uh, protection by law, but they, don't, they cannot access uh, and general practitioners, so they actually uh, use uh, emergency services. Um, they also, uh, staff told us that they have difficulties in ensuring continuity of care and also to, they, they stress the need to improve uh, uh, education and uh, patient empowerment uh, uh, programs uh, and also to improve uh, services integration and collaboration at community level, so with other services. The results of the organizational assessment showed a low degree of, that, of adaptation to diversity of, of the way in which the services were organized when we initiated this process. Uh, interpreting services and uh, translated patients' information was only partially uh, implemented, so that means that in some part of the system, but not in all. Um, also, information on uh, the services, uh, outreach information uh, in order to favor the access to the system uh, was very low. Hotel, reservation, uh, hotel services like uh, the provision of adequate food uh, or uh, religious or spiritual support uh, uh, was low. Uh, also the adaptation of um, medical care practices, particularly uh, in uh, mental health, uh, was uh, uh, quite low, at this level of uh, adaptation. So we didn't have at that time a transcultural uh, mental health services, for example. And uh, again, uh, it was uh, registered and reported by this assessment that uh, um, you know, the implementation of translated information at uh, the moment of discharge and uh, you know, procedure to establish cooperation with other, social, with other services, especially social services, was only partially uh, implement. So it was partially implemented uh, the provision of um, uh, health literacy program uh, or culturally sensitive uh, health education and health promotion program. At the level of uh, the policy and, uh, and uh, the quality assurance of the organization, uh, there was very little attention uh, to uh, the migrants' need uh, in the mission statement. We didn't have uh, written plans. Uh, uh, we didn't have a specific budget to support initiatives. Uh, we didn't have a, a system to monitor inequality in, in the access of healthcare services. So, with you know the results of this uh, need assessment, organizational assessment allowed us uh, to uh, initiate a process of change. So we developed uh, what we called an overall strategy at the center of the organization. So we started to change the, the, the culture of the organization and, and also the way the services were organized and delivered. It was important, as I said, to have the management on board. To favor that, we created a steering group that coordinated all the interventions of the strategy and monitoring, monitored them. And we started to develop a specific action plan that we called the uh, Health Equity Action Plan. Uh, every three years we deliver a new uh, Health Equity Action Plan. So initially, we, uh, the strategy was, was made of five big interventions. Um, 
The first one uh, was the establishment uh, of uh, a coordinated uh, cultural mediation service and uh, sign interpreting, uh, providing also sign interpreting. Um, so we defined the way the service had to be managed. Uh, we defined the policy and procedures that regulate the functioning of uh, the services. Uh, how you know, a professional could uh, request this service. A budget was allocated to sustain these services. We also established a system to monitor and evaluate the quality of uh, cultural mediation services. And we also included in the strategy uh, guidelines to promote and inform the patients of the existence of this. Uh, uh, services and we also started to do systematic training addressing both uh, the cultural mediators and, uh, and uh, health staff. Most of the time we can together because it's important I think to, to train uh, together the cultural mediators and staff. Uh, to improve uh, the access of undocumented migrants and also uh, refugees and uh, asylum seekers, especially those asylum seekers who live in the limbo, uh, even if they have the right to access the services, there are ad administrative barriers that uh, impede them to actually uh, utilize the services to a full extent. So we created a dedicated services where these people uh, had uh, and still had a free access uh, to primary care. This is run uh, in uh, cooperation with an NGO, Caritas, uh, that provides mainly specialized services. Uh, so we, we define the pro procedures for the effective implementation of the immigration law, because sometimes it's the interpretation of the immigration law and how you interpret it that you need uh, to achieve the optimum level of care. Uh, so obviously, these dedicated services access all the migrant family support services like training and uh, international mediation. And uh, uh, we, uh, they also we, we, we established uh, uh, strategies to improve uh, the connection with uh, community services uh, and also community resources. Because, as we all know, the problem of migrants. Uh, you know, are very interconnected, health problems, social problems, housing problems, uh, uh, education problems, and so on. So we started uh, as a third action of this strategy to introduce uh, uh, the systematic, uh, uh, and I systematic implementation of training courses for staff. That means for us uh, to include this training into the organizational training uh, annual act. <laughs> so it was officially recognized as an important issue uh, in the way uh, uh, health staff uh, need to be uh, trained. Uh, and so we also just encourage health professionals to uh, uh, access these uh, training courses. We give them uh, uh, continual medical education credits which is another way to institutionalize these services. See, the, the strategy is also uh, specific policies to uh, improve user information and education. Um, in this, uh, there are guidelines uh, on how to produce uh, written information, uh, especially in term for uh, you know, the producing of uh, you know, form consent forms. Uh, how to do an assessment of the health literacy level of uh, the uh, health messages, uh, how to involve the, use, the end users uh, in the production of the, me the, the messages, and try to involve migrants uh, in actually produce these information. So. And now we recently started to use uh, innovative uh, tools to better achieve migrants. So we started to use an uh, app for smartphones to, to inform them uh, um, about uh, some services, especially you know, how to access uh, prevention services, uh, screening, cancer screenings, uh, which was actually a problem. And we also use, uh, to reach out information, we use uh, uh, new professional figures involved in this way, like the community health educators, uh, 
and uh, peer educators. Mainly these people were, are also intercultural mediators. We just uh, introduced them in training courses, uh, uh, courses, courses uh, to uh, improve their competencies as promoter of health, a promoter of uh, uh, the information about the functioning of uh, uh, the health system. Finally, uh, we, the strategy includes um, <coughs> a policy to improve uh, user and community engagement. Uh, since then we established a, a patient representative committee. Uh, we organize meetings uh, with migrants uh, by the communities. Uh, we have community labs. We discuss with the citizens together with the migrants. Uh, and uh, we are allowing the face to test uh, these new heaven recommendations uh, on uh, engaging users and families at the micro, meso, and macro level, that means at the level of uh, uh, patient provider interaction, uh, the level of interaction with the services, and uh, the level of policies. Uh, we, we have, and, and this is, these recommendations have, have been uh, uh, developed uh, by the international network of health promoting hospitals. It would be good to see how they are working on this issue in Australia and India will talk about that. So to conclude, I want to show you uh, the, the new Health Equity Action Plan, which uh, we have recently uh, released. Uh, I have to stress that it, it is then, because it's important for us, <laughs> it was uh, formalized by administrative act, so it's been included officially in uh, the organizational policies. Uh, we uh, established, uh, we call them micro-equity boards rather than uh, one single equity board. <coughs> so that we follow the three main actions of uh, the equity plan. And the objectives of uh, the equity plan has been uh, uh, agreed both at local level and regional level. So we had also on board uh, the approval uh, and hopefully the support of the regional government. So the, the equity plans focus uh, has uh, three focuses. Uh, the first one is uh, gender equity in healthcare provision, particularly in uh, diabetes and cardiovascular services. The second one, the second focus is about uh, improving clinical and social equity in the waiting list for elective treatment. Um, this is the first time we try this uh, to tackle this issue, uh, just to see if uh, the bottom of the list and uh, you know and uh, and always you know the, the, the less advantages or the more disadvantaged people. Um, and then uh, we want uh, to 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 evaluate the impact on, equ on equity on some uh, clinical paths, but especially on uh, again on diabetes and uh, cardiovascular diseases. I don't know if you are aware of um, these uh, um, clinical pathways. So, so they they intersect different uh, services. Uh, so we want to to evaluate whether all uh, you know patients and users have the same opportunity to be in that path, pathway. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we plan a different action to, to achieve these uh, goals uh, so that uh, we will do data collection. And data collection, as I said, is important. We try to use some uh, specific tools like, uh, and we will use specific tools like the health equity audit or the equity impact assessment. Uh, we're going to use them from, uh, from James. <laughs> And uh, we, will have, we will have a focus group discussions, organizational analysis, and training staff to support the realization of uh, this uh, new equity action plan that will last uh, for the next three, three years. So, by conclude, I want to just to uh, stress some uh, concept that uh, on which I um, focus my presentations. First of all. Uh, uh, migrant cell should be a concern of the whole system <coughs> of care. Um, one uh, important strategy to uh, 
uh, initiate the process of change is to intervene at organizational level to change the culture of the organization and the way the services are organized and delivered. It's important to have uh, uh, a supportive leadership to initiate this process of change. We uh, experienced this and, uh, and I think we can say that we successfully um, uh, achieved uh, the, the result of uh, introducing uh, sensitivity and responsiveness to diversity as a quality criteria, but to achieve that it was important to adopt a tool that allows the assessment of equity interventions. For this uh, particular purposes, it was very important to have the equity standards to, to do that. So this was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. I think it would be an idea, actually, for the for the following regering periode, as we in België, we have a regering in the federal level. It's a very rich presentation, I think. Very rich presentation. Um, and that's, I, I, I'm always surprised that Italy is so far behind, while uh, Italy has a much more tradition of immigration had than our own country. For those who are here, the straight kind. Het is hier aan het Zuidstation dat Italianen, uh, dat er elke week in de jaren, in de jaren 50, een stukje van de jaren 60, elke week een trein kwam met allemaal Italianen aan boord. Het was, uh, elke week werden er Italianen geleverd. En zo noemde men dat, er was een contract met de Italiaanse overheid. Dus wij hebben eigenlijk een veel langere traditie van immigratie dan uh, een groot stuk van Italië. En desondanks staan we helemaal niet zo ver als jullie. Dus dank u wel.